Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at equilibrium particles with friction so we can answer questions from exercise 7c. So we've seen this kind of maths before. We've seen F equals mu R, friction equals the coefficient of friction mu times the reaction force between the ground and the particle R. Um, and we've seen that the friction value can be anything up to this value of mu times r here. As long as it stops the particle from moving, um, it's going to be up to and including this value of mu times r. If it's just slowing the particle down, then it will be uh, mu r exactly. So in statics, where we have a particle in equilibrium, f max is reached when the body is on limiting equilibrium, i.e. on the point of moving. So get used to either one or both of those terms there um, and seeing those in a question. If it's on the point of moving, then any extra force applied in that direction will cause it to move. So maximum friction is going to be applied in the opposite direction. It's important to consider which direction the object is about to move as this affects the direction friction is acting. So we've got a question here, a block of mass 3 kilograms rests on a rough horizontal plane. The coefficient of friction between the block and the plane is 0.4. When a horizontal force P is applied to the block, the block remains in equilibrium. Part A is find the value for P for which the equilibrium is limiting. And part B is find the value of F when the P force is 8. So let's draw a diagram of what we've got here. We've got a three Newton block here, sorry, a three kilogram block here. That's gonna have a weight of three G Newtons. Coefficient of friction between the block and the ground is 0 0.4. So if we've got friction, we need to know what R is. So R here will probably balance out with this three G force down here. We've got a force P pulling it to the right. So friction here is gonna be acting to the left. So, to answer this question then, resolve vertically for R first, because we need to know, work out what this friction value is. So, resolving upwards, we're going to get R equals 3G. So then, the friction, the maximum value of friction, will be 0 0.4 times 3G, which is 11.76. So therefore, if these two forces are perfectly balancing out, and the particle is in this uh, equilibrium, limiting equilibrium here, then P has to equal 11.76, so that if this 11.76 crept up a tiny little bit, 11.77, it would start to pull it to the right. 11.76 is the perfect um, balancing act between friction and this force here. So for part B, find the value of F when P equals 8. Well, 8 is less than the maximum value that friction can be. So the friction would just take the value 8 newtons because the force, the friction, is only there to balance out the force to either stop it from moving or to restrict its acceleration. OK, let's have a look at another question then. A mass of 8 kilogram rests on a rough horizontal plane. The mass of the mass may be modelled as a particle, and the coefficient of friction between the plane and the mass is 0.5. Uh, find the magnitude of the maximum force P, which acts on the mass without causing it to move, um, if P acts at an angle of 60 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, so slightly the same question, but we've got P now acting at an angle. So. What we're going to have to do first then is um, the only direction this can move in is to the right or stay in stationary. So we'll resolve this P force here then. So along the bottom it's going to be P cos 60 and up the side it will be P sine 60. Now this P sine 60, remember, is going to be involved in the calculation for R. So resolving, resolving vertically, taking upwards forces and setting them equal to downwards forces, we're going to have P sine 60 plus R equals 8G. And just rearranging that in terms of R, we're going to have R equals 8G minus sine 60. P sine 60. Um, so to find the maximum value for F, maximum value friction can take, it's going to be 0 0.5 times all of this. Um, multiplying out the brackets, we're going to have the maximum value of friction is equal to 4g minus 0.5p sine 60. So it does get a little bit more messy when this p force is acting at an angle to the horizontal. So we've got the value for the friction. 
Now we're going to have um, now we're going to have to work out the value for p so that these two forces left and right here are in limiting equilibrium. So uh, without causing it to move. So um, resolving horizontally, so leftward forces equal rightward forces. We're going to have here um, p. P cos 60 acting to the right will balance out the F force there, so the acceleration here will be zero, so that's this is an equation that we can make. Substituting now in the value for friction, so it's going to be P cos 60 on the left, and that will equal 4G minus 0.5P sine 60. So now we've just got to multiply out the brackets, move the P's onto one side, factorise out the P, and then divide by the bracket there. Okay, so what we've done there is we've resolved vertically, worked out the value for R. Yes, that did involve P, and the reason that was is because the P force was acting at an angle. So we've had to use the coefficient of friction being 0.5, and we've got a friction value of 4G minus 0.5P sine 60. We've then uh, find, found the maximum value for P such that the mass does not move, or in other words, the left-hand forces will equal the maximum value that friction can take, or the rightward forces equal the maximum value friction can take. And the p-value for this is going to equal 42.01. <coughs> so if p is any greater, the block will start to accelerate. If p is any smaller, then f-max will be less, and hence the block will not be in limiting equilibrium. It will just be in standard, bog-standard equilibrium. Okay, next question, we have an um, inclined plane at 20 degrees, a mass of 10 kilograms. Find the coefficient of friction between the box and the plane, noting that it's in limiting equilibrium. So the maximum value of friction is going to take effect, um, and the upwards forces on the block will equal the downwards forces on the block as well. So we've got a 10g force acting downwards, a reaction force acting out of the inclined plane. Uh, it's going to be sliding down the plane because there are no other forces acting on this particle here, so the particle will potentially be sliding down the plane, but friction will be the um, perfect amount so that it will stop the particle from sliding down the hill. Or in other words, friction will be in limiting equilibrium. So first thing to do is to resolve these forces here then. So 10g cos 20 on the side, 10g sine 20 on the opposite side. So the first thing we'll need to do then is resolving the perpendicular, so the R force must balance out with the 10G cos 20 force there. And then finding F max, that's just going to be mu times this R value. Now we're not given the coefficient of friction, that's what we need to work out, so we'll leave that letter in there and use the R value um, to substitute for R. So the next thing we're going to do then is we're now going to be resolving up and down the plane. So the downwards forces on this particle here are going to be 10g sine 20, and the upwards forces on this particle here are going to be f max, max the friction value. And it's in limiting equilibrium, so that's mean, going to mean that all of the frictional force here is going to be involved. So downwards forces equal upwards forces, 10g cos, sorry, 10g sine 20 equals f. And then substituting in your friction force with what your friction force was calculated to be in the first part. Divide by 10g cos 20, and in fact the 10g's will just cancel out on the top and bottom there. So your answer here is just tan 20, or 0.36, as your coefficient of friction. Lovely, there we are. So the key point for this um, for this part here, for this uh, section here, is that limiting equilibrium means that the maximum value of friction is going to take effect. Um, so you can balance out forces in one direction, um, forces one in one direction equal to the forces in the other direction. Uh, given that the box remains in equilibrium, find the maximum value for P. So now, the question has changed, we now have a particle that is, um, so we now have a uh, force that's being applied at to the horizontal. 
Okay, so we will start to resolve our forces uh, here. We've got a 20 degree force here. We've got P sine 20 there and P cos 20 there. It's very important to notice that the force will be attempting to push the box up the slope. So in actual fact, the friction value will actually be starting to act down the slope this time. So the force here will, will start to push the box up the slope. If it's at its maximum value, we want P to be as big as possible. And if P is a big value, then it's going to be pushing the particle up the slope. So this time friction has reversed its direction. It's now acting down the slope to prevent the particle from moving up the slope. So friction here is always acting in the direction opposite to where we're currently wanting to go or currently going. We're at stationary at the moment, so we are going to be accelerating upwards. So friction needs to be acting downwards. So the calculations here are going to be slightly more difficult. We've got a force coming in at an angle, and that always makes things more difficult. So we're still going to apply the same strategies, though, resolving perpendicular first. So all those blue forces will now come into play. It's in equilibrium, so upwards forces will equal downwards forces. R will equal 10g cos 20 plus sine p sine 20. And finding the value of friction, then, we know it's 0.36 from the part A of this question. So it's going to be 0.36 times all of this thing here. We can't work this out because we've still got this letter P in here and we don't know what that is. Oh, maybe the coefficient of friction has changed. I'm not too sure. Uh, now I update the diagram with this information. So we're going to update it with that information there. Now we're going to be resolving the forces up and down the slope. So notice here that friction is going to be acting down the slope with this 10g sine 20 force here. The only force acting up the slope will be P cos 20. So P cos 20 up the slope plus two of the forces that are acting down the slope. Expand your brackets and we need to move the P's onto the same side. So we're going to expand the brackets and, um, and take away the P mu sine 20 onto the other side. Factorize out the p on the left hand side and then divide by it onto the right hand side and using the coefficient of friction value as 0.36 we're going to get p equals 82 newtons and that's accurate to two significant figures. Lovely, okay, so just be aware then, the emphasis for this question here was that the, the direction that friction was being applied in, the frictional force direction, changed depending upon the scenario of the question. If we've got a, if we've got a particle that's being pushed up the slope, friction acts down the slope. If we've got a, fr a particle that's falling down the slope, friction is acting up the slope. So just be really careful which direction you're setting friction to. Okay, here's a question for you to try then. Pause the video and try this question out. Okay then, let's start to have a go at this question here then. So a packing crate of mass 10 kilograms rests on the horizontal ground. So we're going to have a 10 G force here and the R force upwards here. Uh, is filled with books that are evenly distributed throughout the crate. Coefficient of friction between the crate and the ground is 0 0.3. Find the mass of the books if the crate is in the limiting equilibrium. Find the mass of the books. Oh, the crate is 10 kilograms. And plus we've got an extra force of the books. So that's going to be another mg there. Gotcha. Okay, uh, find the mass of the books if the crate is in limiting equilibrium under the effect of a horizontal force of 147 newtons. So, 147 newtons will be acting in this direction. Which direction will friction be acting in? Well, we've got a force pulling it to the right. Friction is only therefore going to either be preventing the movement or slowing it down. So friction is going to be acting to the left. It's in limiting equilibrium, so from that piece of information there, I know that left-hand forces will equal right-hand forces. Okay, so let's get started on this question. And the first thing we need to do is to work out the value for friction. So I'm going to be setting my upwards forces equal to my downwards forces. So I'm going to have R equals 10 plus M lots of G. 
and then I'm going to be calculating my friction value and I'm going to be using the maximum value of friction here because it's on the point of moving limiting equilibrium as we call it. So friction here and I do generally like to write out the whole word friction so I don't get it confused with F for force is 10 plus M lots of G times by the coefficient of friction which is 0.3 Great, lovely. We could possibly expand this. That might be nice if we do expand it. 3g plus 0.3mg. That would be the value for friction. And let's now resolve horizontally. So leftward forces equal rightward forces. So it's going to be 147 as the rightward force must balance out with this force towards the left, which is going to be 3g plus 0.3mg. So take away 3g onto the other side, and then divide by 0.3g, and we get a value of, let's just quickly do it on the calculator, times 3 times 9.8, um, over 0.3 times 9.8 equals, oh, perfect, 40 newtons. Oh, no, 40 gra of kilograms, it's the weight of the book, isn't it? So 40 kilograms is the weight of the books. State what modelling assumptions you have made. So we've made the assumption here that um, the the box and the crate and the books can be um, can be represented as a particle, and there'll be no force, um, and there'll be no uh, there'll be no extra force of um, of uh, air resistance or maybe uh, the, the the force of this 147 newtons here might topple the box over. So we're assuming that the, that the crate and the box is a particle uh, in this model here. Okay then, that's the answer to this question here then. So have a go at lots of questions from exercise 7c. Pay particular attention to two things. The direction of friction that you're travelling in. Uh, the direction of friction, so that's going to be opposite to the direction you're travelling in. Um, or opposite to the acceleration that you're currently experiencing if you're stationary and also pay attention to the limiting equilibrium words that means that the friction is taking maximum effect um, in your situation at the moment. Great, thanks very much for watching.